Last time, I designed and assembled the workbench with the table saw. This time, I'll add some features, starting with the miter guide. I'm going to use the pieces I cut last time with the table saw to make the handle and guide for the miter. I first attach the handle Then I placed the guide so that I could get a full 45 degree angle on it and drilled out the center hole. I then used a coarse threaded screw to attach it to the bar. Looks like it'll work. The next thing I wanted to do was mount the drill with the sanding disc. I cut a piece of wood from some scraps I had to mount the drill to. I then found these old straps from an old over-the-door mirror that I used to strap down the drill to the piece of wood. The straps already had pre-drilled holes in them, so I just ran a couple of drywall screws through the holes into the board to strap the drill in place. Notice that I used a piece of cardboard between the board and the disc to make sure that the disc wouldn't rub against the board and then it had just a little bit of a gap. I attached a couple more scraps of wood to the board and then mounted the whole thing to the bench with a few screws. I tested it out and it worked great. At this point, the bench is still not very heavy, and I can lift it pretty easily. Next thing I decided to do was add a power strip so I could turn the tools on and off without having to plug and unplug them. A 
couple of small screws on the side and the power strip was in place, if a little crooked. A clamp to hold the cord in place, and that was that. Now I can turn on and off the tools. The workbench sitting on these old patio chairs is not exactly stable, so the next thing I wanted to do was use my table saw to build some saw horses that the bench can sit on to raise it up. I set my angle on the miter guide and then cut a 60 degree angle on a piece of 2x4 I had. Now this is where the lack of depth in the cutting blade becomes troublesome, as I have to flip over the 2x4 to cut all the way through it. I decided that I wanted to make the sawhorses the same height as the workbench so that I can use them as an extension for the workbench when I want to cut something really long. I measured and marked where to cut the next angle cut on my 2x4, then cut it. I then used that leg to mark the angle on the second leg. I was having some difficulty with the miter guide staying in place because I just had a screw in the guide piece and it kept slipping. So I decided to modify it and add a carriage bolt instead so I could tighten it down really tight. Once I held the bolt in place, I checked my angle, then tightened down the bolt and now the miter guide worked much better. I still had to flip the 2x4 over though to cut through it. I'll have to fix that. Once I had my legs cut, I screwed them together and checked the height.
I then cut out the other pair of legs and a top piece for the sawhorse and assembled it. Now the workbench can sit snugly on top of the sawhorse. And like I said, I can use the sawhorse as an extension support when I cut something long, like the other 2x4 I had to make the other sawhorse. With the sawhorse to support the long end of the 2x4, even cutting through a knot in the wood was not much of a challenge. I cut out all the pieces for the second sawhorse and assembled it the same way that I did the first one. And now I could stand up the workbench at a pretty good height. Let me know what you think of the progress so far in the comments. There's still some work to do, like fixing that cutting depth on the table saw. And thanks for watching.